Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Happy Easter. I'm so glad to see you here this morning for worship. Um, for those of you who are visiting this morning, and we have quite a few visitors, I'm Reverend Dr. Deborah Hafner, the Settled Minister at um, the Unitarian Universalist Church in Reston, and I want to warmly welcome you to our special Easter Sunday service. This morning, we're going to be talking and singing about Easter, spring, rebirth, resurrection, and miracles throughout the service. You're going to hear the word Alleluia a lot this morning and this lovely background that Cecile Bachelor created for us has the words Alleluia on it. Alleluia literally means praise God. And so I invite you as you sing Alleluia in our hymns this morning that you think praise life, praise the miracle of the spring, Praise the miracle that we are here together again. I so wish we were in this sanctuary together this morning. I can hardly believe that this is our second Easter service on Zoom. These slides are from Easter 2018, and it makes me happy to think of being together with all of you, and, and that will come shortly. What a beautiful Easter morning that was, and what a beautiful Easter morning this is. I'm lighting the special candle this morning for the people of Minneapolis, for the jurors, for those who testified, and I'm sure many of you watched along with me this week, those who testified at the trial of Derek Chauvin who killed George Floyd last year. Those harrowing testimonies are a stark reminder that violence and oppression are just as much a part of our time as it was 2000 plus years ago when Jesus was murdered by state officials. May we pray in this case for a just outcome. I'm leading worship this morning with Linda Weber, our director of religious education, Cynthia Young, our music director and accompanist, Jesse Leon. Our office director, Beth DePasquale is running the tech side of worship and worship chair member, Kara Fortner is our usher this morning in the chat. We're also joined this morning by Nate Otto, who we have hired as our new Sunday morning tech coordinator. Nate will be training with us in the next few weeks, and then he's going to take over from Mike um, Schmidt and Beth. I'm so grateful to Beth and Mike Schmidt for their last year of incredible service as our tech host, and I am delighted to welcome Nate to our team. I have a few announcements. Um, our stewardship chair, Ann Thomas, reports that we have met 80% of our stewardship goal. Uh, we still have more than 35 of you to hear from. So please, please do make your pledge today if you haven't and return the calls from the stewards, who, the stewardship committee who's called you. UUCR depends on each of you and we still have quite a ways to go to fund the church for next year. So thank you to all of you who have made your pledge already. I also wanna tell you that next Sunday, we're gonna be holding neighborhood circle meetings and then a newcomer visitor time with me immediately after the service. Um, uh, for those of you who are visiting um, or have only come a few times, I hope you'll come back and so I get a chance to know you. Um, and those of you who are part of our church and part of our neighborhood circles, please come so that you can spend time with each other. Um, I hope you can plan to be with us till at least 1130 next week. Okay, back to centering ourselves for worship. Please take your deepest breaths of the morning right now. And let us welcome Jesse playing our prelude, Spring from the Four Seasons by Antonio Vivaldi. Let us enter our time of worship together.
democracy. The opening words this morning are my, by my colleague, UU minister, the Reverend Peggy Clark. They're called Love Brings Us Back to Life. Easter, Easter is a holiday of miracles. It is life from death, joy from sorrow, celebration from mourning. Easter reminds us that all is never lost, that the story continues as long as we are here to tell it. So gather up your worries. We're gonna bury them beneath the ground and we're gonna watch them transform into flowers of hope. Pushing through the earth, reminding us that on Easter morning, love brings us back to life, calls us from sadness, from grief, from anxiety, into a world renewed, alive, and filled with joy once again. Good morning, my name is Cynthia Young and I am the music director at UUCR. Please join us in singing our opening hymn this morning, number 269, Lo, the day of days is here. The lyrics of this hymn remind us to give thanks for this glorious time of year when nature awakes, leaves reappear and hope returns. There is even a joyful alleluia at the end of every single line. A special thank you to our song leader, Lisa Gunderman, for recording this hymn for us. Let's all sing along with Lisa and Jesse and let your joyful alleluias ring out. and happy Easter and happy spring. My name is Linda Weaver and I am the Director of Religious Education at UUCR. As Reverend Deborah lights our UU Rustin chalice, you may wish to light a candle in your own home. Our chalice lighting words this morning are by the Reverend Dillman Baker Sorrells. For holy days on which we recall the old stories we light the flame. For Passover, which reminds us of the courage and strength of those seeking freedom in the past, we light the flame. For Easter, which reminds us that love is our greatest challenge, we light the flame. For gathering today in this sacred virtual space, we light the flame. For the opportunity to be together as a community, 
to remember the past, to plan for our future, to be alive in our present. In our church, we intentionally recommit to each other every Sunday by singing our covenant together. Love is the spirit of this church. We will sing along with our own congregation and choir virtual video. The words will appear in your chat box. If you are visiting us this morning for the first time, please accept this song as our blessing to you. As a child, Easter for me was getting dressed up in new spring clothes, attending a worship service, and then going back home and hunting for Easter eggs, with the Easter eggs being the most important part. That was Easter. As I got older, I realized that what I heard at church didn't really connect with the Easter eggs and candy. It wasn't until I became a Unitarian Universalist that I understood at all how they were related. This morning, I have six eggs that will, may help us discover more about that connection. I wonder what's in the first egg. Let's open it and find out. It's a chick. Before there was writing and before people understood how eggs were formed or how baby chicks developed in the egg, People were filled with wonder when they saw a baby bird hatch. It seemed like a miracle because eggs and baby birds arrived with the spring and the return of flowers and green leaves. Eggs became a sign of spring and a symbol of birth and the renewal of life. Our next egg is pink. I wonder what's inside it. Hmm, it's a picture. Ah. Many people have spring festivals and eggs have been a part of these celebrations. This photo is of someone painting a giant egg for No Ruse. No Ruse is the Persian New Year and it takes place at the spring equinox around March 20th. Let's see what's in our next egg. It is a bunny. How did bunnies get connected to Easter? The goddess of spring and fertility in the land known as Germany now was named Ostara. Ostara's symbol was the rabbit because rabbits have lots and lots of babies. Eggs were another symbol of spring and new birth. These were combined somehow or other and by 1680 there were stories in Germany of the Easter rabbit laying eggs and hiding them. German immigrants brought the tradition of the Easter Bunny and the eggs to the U.S. in the 1700s. I wonder what's in our next egg. Let's find out. It's a picture of Jesus. And here we get to the stories I heard in the Christian churches growing up. Jesus was a teacher of radical love. He said, love your neighbor as yourself and showed through stories and his own actions that a neighbor might be someone most people look down on, or even an enemy. There were people who didn't like these teachings, and there were leaders who were afraid Jesus had too many followers and might take power away from them. Hmm. I wonder what we'll find in the next egg. This purple egg it looks like a cross. 
Because people were afraid of Jesus and his teachings, Jesus was arrested, and he was punished in a terrible way used at that time. He was put on a wooden cross and left until he died. Christians believe that after he died, Jesus was resurrected or reborn, and they use a cross as a symbol to remember Jesus, his teachings, and the resurrection. And the Easter eggs? They do have a connection. Many Christians came to think of the Easter egg as a symbol of Jesus' rebirth. Just have one last egg, and I wonder what could possibly be inside it? Hmm. What does this look like? It's a question mark. What does Easter mean to us as Unitarian Universalists? Some of us may believe that Jesus does live on in his teachings of radical love. Some of us may think about the idea of resurrection and consider how we might make changes in our own lives. And certainly, some of us may think of Easter as simply a celebration of spring and the new life that spring brings. I wonder what Easter means to you. As Unitarian Universalists, the meanings will differ between us. What it means to you is for you to discover. And, as it has for me, the meaning may change over time. Thank you, Linda, for your time for all ages. Indeed it was. This is the time in our service where we invite you to light a virtual or a real candle in your home for a joy or concern in your heart. You're invited to share your joys and concerns in our chat box. Please write to all attendees and remember that anything you write is public. Please take the time to read what others are writing in the chat box. And when you are done, let me invite you into your own time of meditation, reflection, and prayer as Jesse plays for us Chopin's Raindrop Prelude.
please join me in the spirit of meditation and prayer. Alleluia, praise, let us give praise. Let us call on the spirit that connects us and surrounds us and imbues us with light. May we hold in our hearts all those who are struggling this morning. There are many among us who are remembering people who were important in Easter's past. People like Jody and Sue and Rich who are with people today in their hearts thinking about their passing recently, but also for those of us who remember the aunts, the uncles, the sisters, the parents who made Easter special in past years. We hold in our hearts those who struggle with cancer, operations, new diagnoses, and those who struggle with diseases of the mind. May they find joy even in the darkness of their tombs right now. And we smile though. We smile for the rebirth of spring, the beauty that surrounds us every time we go outside. We hold in our hearts all those who have birthdays and anniversaries and new jobs, new relationships for the miracle of hope, the miracle of the vaccines going into arms, the miracle that life is returning once again, the miracle that we can say, Alleluia, praise this life, praise this time, praise the miracle of being together. And so may it be my friends, amen. We are so happy to share our newest virtual choir project, In Time of Silver Rain, a choral setting of a poem by Langston Hughes with music by Rollo Dilworth. The poem, which appears as both a hymn and a reading in our hymnal, is a celebration of the resurrection of nature this time of year when spring and life are new. The opening solo is sung by Brandon Bell, whom you will recognize from all our previous videos this year. Brandon is currently the baritone resident artist with Utah Opera. Thank you to Jesse for introducing us to Brandon, who feels like part of our choir family now. Thank you as always to our fabulous choir singers for committing your time and talent to creating this beautiful music. And to our accompanist, Jesse, who not only plays the piano, but is also our video editor. We truly hope that you enjoy In Time of Silver Rain. Of life 
That was extraordinary. Thank you to Cynthia and Jesse. Easter Sunday is always a little bit difficult for me. As those of you who are members know, I grew up Jewish and I identify today as a Jewish Unitarian Universalist. I didn't grow up celebrating Easter. Unlike the ubiquitous Christmas story, I actually had no idea as a child what Easter was about. I did, however, experience a form of Easter envy. I wanted her pastel colored new coat or a new dress. I wanted her pretty Easter bonnet. I wanted those white gloves. I even wanted new pairs of white cotton anklets. I begged to go on Easter egg hunts sponsored by local churches. And I so wanted to wake up in the morning to a basket teeming with chocolate eggs and a big chocolate bunny on Easter morning. I so wanted to be her. None of that ever happened in my home growing up. In part because Easter was labeled as Christian and all things Christian were to be avoided by US Jewish families in the mid 20th century after the horrific events of the Shoah. It was understandable. Now, I know that most of you learned the Easter story as a child. If you were Catholic or Anglican or many of the mainline Protestants, you probably learned the story when you learned the words of the Nicene Creed. Jesus was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. The resurrection and the ascension vindicate the suffering and the crucifixion. And I have to wonder, how did your child self understand any of that? Each year, I reread the Bible passages from Exodus and Deuteronomy and the Gospels to remind myself of the actual biblical stories of Passover and Easter. And I'm reminded how much more complex those stories are than the ones that I remember from my childhood. Both Passover and Easter are ultimately about how God triumphs, or if you prefer, how love triumphs over oppression and violence. They are stories of journeying in the wilderness, suffering greatly, and then experiencing new life, a new way of being. These stories persist, as I have told you before, because they are truth stories, even if they are probably not true stories. There are basic truths in them that make them our stories, even today. Now, components of traditional Easter are difficult for this Unitarian Universalist. I know some of you resonate to them, and as Linda shared in her lovely story, it is up to each of us to find our own truths in these legends. But for me personally, I don't believe in a risen Christ or that Good Friday somehow redeems all human sin. I reject what is called atonement theory, that Jesus died for the sins of the world. I also have a hard time as my systematics professor used to teach us that crucifixion must precede resurrection. I used to always say to him, why? Why couldn't you have had a resurrection without crucifixion? But I want you to know, those of you who are worrying, is I do find other parts of this story quite compelling. In seminary, I came to love the Jesus of the Gospels. The Jesus who I was taught was, in the words of Diana Butler Bass's new book, Freeing Jesus, which I highly recommend to you, she writes that Jesus was a rabbi, a prophet, a teacher, a miracle worker, an itinerant mystic, a political rebel, and a rabble-rousing Jewish peasant. Jesus' revolutionary speaks to me. Jesus as the embodiment of love and moral exemplar is a Jesus I want to know more about. And I am fascinated that these stories and this man born more than 2020 years ago is still so central to the lives of tens of millions of people today. 
I also in seminary worked to understand how, how was it that the gospel's central message of love and care for the most marginalized, the most vulnerable, had been allowed to be corrupted by those on the religious right who have tried to create a Jesus who sides with discrimination and political oppression. Diana Butler Bass starts her new book with a wonderful story. She's praying at an altar rail at a side chapel in the Washington National Cathedral in front of a triptych of Jesus. You perhaps have visited that. And she is in a sorrowing mood and calls out, where are you, God? And then she writes, I hear a voice. Get me out of here. I stare up at the icon. Jesus, is that you? Get me out out of here, I hear again, more insistent now. She goes on, the chapel fell silent, but I knew this was a divine demand for freedom. I was not sure what to think, but I also didn't want to tell the priest who was wandering up the aisle. I doubted that the Washington National Cathedral would take kindly to the son of God looking for the exit. I hope that made you smile. I hear a call in this story to take Jesus and all that Jesus stands for into the larger world, away from the church little p politics or the empire's government's big p politics, but to widely spread the, Jesus, the message of what Jesus in the gospel calls the greatest commandment. I saw someone wrote it in the chat. Love God with all your heart, all your strength and all your might and love your neighbor as yourself. The Easter story, my friends, reminds us that all of us, every one of us knows crucifixion and we all have the possibility of resurrection. This past year, this past year in quarantine has surely taught us what it is to be in the wilderness, right? And for many of us, how hard it is to find hope in the darkness. We perhaps more than any other year I can remember are collectively wishing for rebirth. I've just finished Kristen Hanna's new novel, The Four Winds. Um, I know some of my readers have read it. Um, the story of people in the Southwest during the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Hanna in her afterward writes this mid pandemic this past year, she says, Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that the Great Depression would become so relevant in our modern lives, that I would see so many people out of work, in need, frightened for the future. We've gone through bad times before and survived, even thrived. History has shown us the strength and durability of the human spirit. In the end, it is our idealism and our courage and our commitment to one another, what we have in common that will save us." End of the quote. So my friends, she's talking about resurrection, right? Diana Bass tells a story in her book of asking a retired bishop in the Episcopal Church if he believes in the resurrection. The bishop replies, believe it. I've seen it too many times not to. You have too. Think about the Easter week stories. Are there any of us who haven't experienced betrayals and denial? Or haven't wished like Jesus in the garden to have our burdens lifted? Haven't we all experienced those little deaths that must be endured before our life will go on? Who among us has not had to roll the rock away and let new light in? Haven't we had our moments where we are on the cross, forsaken and alone? Haven't we stood with terror and amazement like the women at the tomb as a new direction, a new life is revealed to us? Haven't we all wished we could be reborn? Don't we feel a little a bit like some of those in this very, very moment? 
Yeah, me too. The Easter story reminds us that everyone suffers, even human exemplars, that we are never alone in our suffering. For those of us who are theists, we can rest in God's love for us, knowing perhaps that it is at these times of darkness that God is most with us. For those of us who are not theists, we can surely relate to suffering and hoping for an end to it. As the Reverend Frederick Buchner wrote, quote, crucifixion is part of our stories too, because we are people of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Yet we're raised up nonetheless. We're raised up and we have to tell that part of the story too. In spite of every reason to give the whole thing up, we are here just able to hope. In spite of all the griefs and failures we've known, we are still here just to rejoice. In spite of the darkness that all of us flirt with, we are still just a little at least in love with the light. By miracle, we survive. And for the time being, could that be resurrection enough? My friends, we, we, we have miracles to celebrate and we have miracles to perform. The miracle that we are here at all. The miracle of the spring returning to the earth. The miracle of the silver rain we heard sung about. The miracle that we are here together. The miracle of the vaccines and that we got through this past year and we are ready to be reborn. Reverend Buchner also goes on to write, we have it in us to work miracles of love and healing as well as to have them worked on us. We have it in us to bless and forgive and heal and once in a while to grieve at another's pain and to rejoice, to rejoice at another's joy almost as if it was our own, to speak with our hearts, to bear witness to and live out of and live toward and live by the true word of the holy story as it seeks to stammer itself forth through the holy stories of its all. End of quote. So my friends, this Easter morning, I want you to remember that you, you, each of you are a miracle. Our lives are a miracle. This beautiful spring, I am looking out outside these windows, this beautiful spring is a miracle. Let us remember this morning to stop and give praise. Praise God, if you wish. But for all of us, let us praise life and love. Alleluia. Happy Easter. We invite you now to join us in singing together our closing hymn, number 344, A Promise Through the Ages. The words will be in your chat box. We hope you will sing along with me and Jesse.
Alleluia. Final closing words are adapted from the Reverend Alex Holt. I changed them a little bit for us. For all of us who celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, may this day be another affirmation of divine love and promise. For all of us who see the eternal story of new spring and life beginning anew, may we breathe deeply a season of promise and hope. For all of us who are experiencing despair or hopelessness this Easter morning, may we find freedom in the darkness or depression of a doorway, doorway to light and warmth. Together, we can do what no one isolated person can do alone. Rolling this heavy stone aside together reminds us we are far more powerful than we could ever be on our own. Our offering of strong hands to help our prayers made real. Let us begin again in love. Our postlude today is an arrangement for solo piano of the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. Hallelujah is an alternative spelling of Alleluia. It is actually the same word meaning praise God. While we often hear the Hallelujah Chorus at Christmas, Messiah is actually an Easter oratorio and the Hallelujah Chorus is a celebration of the resurrection. Thank you, Jesse, for this piano rendition of Handel's Hallelujah. Hallelujah, which by the way is the same word as Alleluia. So praise, let us give praise. Our worship service is coming to a close. Before we start our breakout rooms, we ask you make your contribution to the virtual collection plate at the link on the slide or the link we'll put in the chat box or by mailing in your check. We do hope you'll log into the breakout rooms after Jesse plays for us one more time. And I'm going to suggest that you share what Easter means to you or your memories of Easter's past. We also invite you at this time to use our chat box as a virtual reception line, which some of you have started to do. If you'd like to give us a message about this service, please feel free to type it into the chat box now. Know how much your words of appreciation matter to each of us. Before we put up the offering slide, let me close the service by saying the words I end with each week. My friends, go in peace. May our real service begin. Happy Easter. Hallelujah.